Sports Epic Show Radio from Radies Rise. We're back here in the heart of Tampa in a special park location because guess what? I have something new from that iconic Italian brand. This is it. This is the first time ever, 2023 Maserati Gracale. This particular one is the Modena trim. But before we get into this compact performance luxury SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. A lot of times when people say iconic Italian car brand, of course your mind is automatically gonna run like a galloping, prancing horse towards the brand Ferrari. Well, guess what? There's a couple other Italian brands that are currently available here in the United States, and this is one of those legends. Maserati has been around, believe it or not, since 1914, started by the five Maserati brothers all the way in Bologna, Italy. What's interesting is that in 1940, they moved their location from Bologna to Modena, which this trim has the namesake. Now, obviously, in today's auto industry, SUVs are still a crucial element to a manufacturer's lineup. And so that Maserati can build amazing vehicles like the MC20, they decided to pump up their lineup of SUVs by bringing this Gracale. Now the Gracale being a compact crossover performance luxury SUV is gonna go up directly against that other Italian brand, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio, and then of course the BMW X3 series, the X3, the X3M, the X3M competition, so on and so forth. But what I wanna find out is, for the money, is this the best new luxury performance SUV you should be buying? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this pasta rocket known as the Maserati Gracale. Right off the bat, the styling. You cannot argue with how the Italian flair, the Italian flavor is brought into Maserati products, especially with the Gracale. Up front, I love the way that they did the headlight housing, the shape, and also, of course, the LED lighting. You have your LED turn signals and daytime running lamps, full LED projector beam headlight, and I love the way that they split. Instead of doing like a generic, like everybody does this like U shape or boomerang shape, I like the way they broke it up on the corner. Now, working your way down, guess what? The flavor of the day is functionality. We have that Italian pasta sauce, full functionality on your corner air curtain, and some functionality in the center. A little bit of gloss black, just a little sprinkling, just like some parm on your meatball sub. And then of course we have some flat black. Everything else is painted this beautiful, nice bright white. Now when we come across that iconic grill, so much history is within that Trident. And this is the Maserati brand. So you'll notice with the top portion of the grill, it's gloss black with that massive Trident logo. You get a forward facing camera. I love the way it's got that concave shape to it. And then on the bottom portion, they did a great job making it blend in with the corners. You have some flat black and then a little bit of a gloss black lip splitter on the bottom portion. And if you're wondering why do they use the Trident? Going back to Bologna, where the brothers lived, the Maserati brothers, in the center of the town was a statue of Poseidon, also known as Neptune. And of course, with that trident, they decided to take the logo of that god of the sea and bring it into their brand. Now, when we get up onto the hood, I love the way you got the other Maserati badge with the trident logo. And another part is look at how it dips into this little point right in the center. That's that Italian style and attention to detail. Super clean lines that when you're washing this car, you're gonna wanna rub your hands all over this. I like the way you have a mini bulge in the center. And then instead of just it being flat to the peaks of the fenders, I like the way you have that other shape that's added with that indentation that goes right into the A pillar. Super clean. Now, as we kinda scoot around the bend, Steven's gonna go super wide and I'm gonna stay nice and tight because guess what? We have optional 21 inch wheels with the Trident in the center, of course, machine aluminum gloss black. Look at the size of that massive brake caliper, six piston caliper with that pasta red. Don't be using ragu, no ragu. That's homemade sauce right from Bologna, Italy. 
and I love the way it's got the Maserati script on it. You do have, of course, adaptive suspension, all four corners, and this is, because it's the Modena trim, it has an optional sport tuning to it to give you even better handling through the twisty bits. Just like when you take a fork and spoon and you wrap up that spaghetti right around the fork into the spoon. But as we kind of rise up, I love the way it's got the painted fender openings, no flat black. And I'm gonna kind of do a swing around, a switch ado with Steven, and we're gonna focus on this beautiful fender. Not only do we have the painted opening, but then you're gonna have the traditional portlets on the side that's going to give you functionality and that classic look. Some aluminum silver finish, some gloss black, and I love the way they did the Modena script on the side here. Just enough to where you know that this is a piece of Italian class and that connection to the past. You are gonna get color matched mirror caps, 360 degree cameras, and your turn singles built in slim and trim, black trim, top and bottom, gloss black, and look at the way they did the door handles. Come on in, I wanna show you something here. It looks like this is the actual handle, it is not. This is just some silver trim. You put your finger in here, and then you push, and then the door opens. Really, really classy, and then of course that lower body line flows from the front door into the rear door, and I love the way they did the side sill with the extra gloss black. Now coming towards the rear tire, you'll notice that we get a little width. So up front, you do have a skinnier tire set up. Down below, you're gonna have 295 on the width. So we're getting that meaty rear tire to put the trash into the ground, machine aluminum accents, the Maserati bright red caliper, and they even do a fender flare. And the way I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna have Steven kind of swing way out, and he's gonna show you down the side of the vehicle that nice flared rear fender, 295s. That's a meaty rear tire on that 21 inch wheel. Look at the Trident logo. This is always a, a touch. No matter what Maserati you're looking at, MC20, MC12, the Ghibli, whatever you got, there's always gonna be a Trident on that rear pillar. And then coming to the rear, super clean. I like the way they did the taillights, full LED of course. You got some silver trim, the Maserati script looking super classy. The one thing of course, this has gotta go. I want to see this rear spoiler come off further, at least on the Modena trim, and then take the wiper and tuck it underneath. You do have a fixed glass roof, and that's another thing I want to point out of Zonk, is that they should have just painted the whole roof black. Why have this white section? I don't think it really blends well nicely. So paint that whole thing black. And then down below, they did a great job. Look at that exhaust. Staggered setup. Nice round opening, gloss black tips with the rear diffuser, and you can see the quad tip on both sides, the Gracali badge, and that is all. But while we go ahead, let's pop the hood on this new performance SUV and see what's powering it. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts. Now, you do have some different power outputs and engine choices. When you go Modena, you are gonna have that turbocharged four-cylinder with the all-wheel drive, of course, real wheel drive base. Now, one thing I wanna point out before we get into specifics is just how far back that engine is. They do that, obviously, for weight distribution. You'll notice the massive strut tower brace that goes from one side to the other. Engine cover is actually very tasteful. It's got some wire mesh finish to it. It's got the Maserati badge and script. But what are we exactly talking about that's underneath that hood? So on the Modena trim, and if you're wondering, well, Joe, what kind of trims are there? GT, Modena, and Trofeo. So this is right in the spaghetti sauce sweet spot. It's a two liter inline four turbocharged engine looking at 325 horsepower, 332 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Like I said, all-wheel drive. You got that limited slip diff, zero to 60 in about 4.9 seconds. MPGs, 22 in the city, 29 on the highway, and the vehicle weighs 4,450 pounds. So interesting to see how they have the three different trims. If you want more power, you could go over 500 horsepower. That's gonna be in the top Trofeo. The standard GT comes in around 275 on the horsepower. So that gives you an idea of where we're at horsepower-wise. But why don't we go ahead 
Yes, we got a four cylinder turbo. Why don't we go ahead, let's fire it up and hear what it sounds like. guys we're inside this say it with me 2023 maserati gracale mona and this is the mona limited edition it's one of those packages where you get those sexy 21 inch wheels now i know you're saying to yourself well joe i've been looking for a smaller performance luxury suv uh, uh, i have always loved italian things growing up especially the food i've always felt that italians do it better how much is this Maserati? Very good question. So starting price for Modena trim is gonna be right at $72,000. This one being a limited edition and all the other options that it has, has an MSRP of $92,000. But let's see how it stacks up and what you get for the money to the door panels. I love the clean style. You have that nice leather material up top with the stitching. My zonk is the amount of gloss black on the door panel there that's a little too much but what makes up for it of course is the aluminum speaker grill covers and the red leather trim with the diagonal stitching you'll notice that there's no actual door handle to open up the door you'll see a round circle surrounded by silver there that is the button you hit to open up the door and then you do have gloss black on the switch gear which you are going to get fingerprints so make sure you have your microfiber towel ready Door pocket is a pretty good size for, I would say two cannolis and a nice old glass of chocolate milk to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, I do like the way they move the dash very far forward. You got the black leather with the stitching, some silver trim, love the way they did the red. The two-tone just brings this whole vehicle alive. Even on the sides here, you see the little touches like the Maserati Trident? These are the things I was telling you about that when you go Maserati, you get. Now, in the center stack, all new for 2023 is the Maserati analog clock. But as you can see, it is digital display, which is really cool with that silver trim. I like the way they did the AC vents and the switch gear. They really moved away from a lot of switch gear from other Stellantis products in there. There's a few things, but a lot of it has changed in this Gracali. This massive infotainment system screen, love the size. This is that Uconnect 5 system that is in Jeep products and uh, the Dodge Durango, for example. Very intuitive system. The one thing though that separates it from the rest is I'm gonna hit vehicle and it actually has a little Gracali there. We're gonna hit the little Gracali. Now it has your info for your car. Remember, this is a hybrid style setup with that actual electric motor and the battery pack and look at how they placed it right over that rear axle nice and low and we have that all-wheel drive so you could see how things are being powered we could go into performance this is my favorite you got your technical gauges boost gauge torque oil pressure we can go into torque management and show where that split is happening for your all-wheel drive drag race it'll actually record zero to 60 zero to 100 all those goodies Keep on going, we got an off-road mode, pitch, roll, height, and remember this does rise and lower, and then of course, the accessory gauges. So they really have you covered for all that important information. Let me throw it in reverse, and if you notice, to go into different gears, you gotta hit the button here. So we'll go into reverse, backup camera, nice and large. I like the way you got your 360 display, also nice and large. The problem is I just wish it was a, a, just a little brighter on the resolution, but other than that, looking good we go back in the park so this is going to control your zf eight speed automatic transmission and then you have an eight inch digital display for all your ac controls and yes we do have ventilated seats we do have heated seats and heated steering wheel dual climate this is where you could adjust your height of the vehicle i love the look at the graphics really intuitive like i was saying and watch this i'm gonna have steven focus more back on the screen when you go into the different modes there's gt there's sport and then of course there's off-road. So I like the way they show the graphics, just like Gran Turismo and the different modes. 
Coming back, we have our wireless charging pad, a bit of gloss black. So this is gonna be another one of those zonks, but guess what? Open the doors, what do we got? USB-C, USB-A, some felt lining in there, and then you could put, I would say, some nice gold chains in there. 24 karat gold so it doesn't scratch. Two cup holders, you have your key fob condom with the Maserati logo in there. I'll try to pick it up, let me just see if I can get this out real quick, there we go. There's our Maserati key fob, very sexy key fob, and I don't say that very often. Spin it around, there's your buttons, and then we gotta put it back in the condom for protection. That nice red leather, open this guy up. What do we got, more felt lining, you got a 12 volt, and you got enough room in there, I would say easily for 16 Twinkies. And I'm talking about Italian Twinkies, so what does that mean? Get, you get the ones with the marinara sauce instead of the cream. Very tasty, only in Italy. Seats, love the leather. You got the Trident logo up top on the headrest, the design, the bolstering, of course, full electric assist for the passenger, full electric assist for the driver, and we do have this massive panoramic sunroof. You got an opening sunroof for the front passenger, and then fixed glass for the rear. I'll make sure that that goes all the way back so that you can see how this opens up and then we can open up the shade even further and then this closes. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, look at that. But why don't you come on over to the business end? I wanna show you behind this sexy flat bottom steering wheel in this Maserati. Hey guys, come on in to this Maserati Gricali. Now you're gonna be welcomed by a very tasteful aluminum sill plate with the Maserati logo, a pedal box, perfect for a race car. You have that aluminum dead pedal, brake pedal and throttle. Excuse the sand, we are at the park today. You do have some aluminum finish on the switch gear for the seat controls and that helps separate the Maserati from the different vehicles within Stellantis, especially this is not a parts bin special like maybe some Maseratis from the past. It has a lot of unique switch gear. Let me show you something straight up unique. This beautiful leather wrap steering wheel, even stitching on the leather horn button. You got that Maserati Trident there, flat bottom, little silver uh, and gloss black touches. Love the way they got the start stop button and the drive mode selector knob that you could twist on the fly. The one thing you'll notice right from say Jeep is gonna be the switch gear here. This is right from like say a, a Jeep Grand Wagoneer, but you do have super size. You go to Mickey D's, you tell them to super size it. These are the paddles that they're gonna give you. You could surf anywhere in the world with these and they're bolted to the steering column, not the steering wheel. And this is an electric tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then really the crescendo here, the climax is that digital gauge display. Absolutely perfect on the shape the clarity, the graphics, when you go into the different modes, it actually changes, which is really great, from sport to comfort to off-road. Obviously, we're gonna leave it in full-on sport, and then on top of that, you could scroll through different information in the center, your navigation, your performance gauges, lane keep assist, all that great stuff. And then, as we kinda put the period on the end of this sentence, you have a movie theater size head up display that for 2023 does have augmented reality. So you don't have to wear those VR goggles anymore when you're driving, it's kind of dangerous. This, it's all built in. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the back seat of this Italian Maserati Gricali. Hey guys, back seat time and I'm telling you with this nice Alcantara style microfiber headliner, plenty of headroom even with that massive panoramic sunroof. Feels really good back here, and I like the way they brought the quality of the materials to the rear seats as well. Sometimes that's not always the case. So you have that wonderful leather, large pockets here. Easily put, I would say, two California kitchen pizzas back here. Nice 16 inch in diameter. And then you do have a rear command center, which is great, with your rear AC controls and vents. The problem is, is you're only getting heated seats. And to me, at $92,000, that's a major zonk. Down below, you do have a USB-C and a USB-A. You'll notice that high area in the center for the drive shaft. And then, of course, you're gonna have nice, comfortable leather material everywhere, just like up front. Armrest, nice height. Could be a little softer, but I'll let it pass. 
with the two cup holders, but why don't we go ahead, let's get to the cargo area and see how much room we have in this Grikali. All right guys, time to get in that cargo area. Gonna hit the button, nice electric assist. You're gonna be greeted to a wide opening and pretty tall for a compact SUV. What you have is over 20 cubic feet of space. If you need more, I'm gonna show you how to get more, but you do have a 12 volt in the back, home power source, and of course, the official Italian leather binding for the manuals. You could read that during your uh, downtime, get all the history on your Gricali. Now, if you're wondering, well, how do you put the seats down, Joe? Because I need more room to get more pasta in the back of this pasta rocket. Real simple, you're just gonna pull on these handles, and I like the way that they drop very, very quickly. One, two, three. Boom, look at that. Now you just maximize your space. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, does this thing have a spare? I know it's a performance vehicle. Does it have a spare? We lift up the cargo floor. That automatically tells you right there, no. You're gonna be given an electric air pump and some flat fix, obviously saving weight. But why don't we go ahead? We don't have a spare. We cut some weight. We got the Mona. That's over 300 horsepower. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go for a little spin on throttle, of course in the new Grucali. All right, guys, we're inside this all new 2023 Maserati Grucali. I tell you right away, the interior feels really upscale in here. And one thing that I forgot to show you, which I'll show you now, is if you look at the clock here, you could actually change what is in the clock. You could actually change the type of clock it is, say you're feeling a little sporty, or you could put even a G meter. So have an actual G meter where the clock goes. That's a lot of fun. I'm gonna leave that up since we're gonna hit some twisty bits. I got the performance gauges in front of me. We are in sport mode, of course. And we'll use the paddles in a second, just not right now. Uh, but I wanna do an on throttle from a dead stop. Because like I said, it's interesting with that hybrid setup, a little over 300 horsepower. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go. Nice, fast, purposeful shift from the eight speed into this right hand bend. It actually transmits pretty well the information to the steering wheel. And I can feel like after driving a little bit in comfort mode, I could feel how the suspension in sport mode has a little bit different tuning. Also, the sound. Yes, it's definitely four cylinder. It does not sound anything exotic, but you are getting a louder sound. It'll be interesting to see what the Trofeo is like when we get our hands on that one. But let's go ahead, let's do another on throttle. This time I'm gonna hit drive twice. That puts us into manual shift mode and I'm gonna use these ginormous pizza shoveling size paddles to go through the gears. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go. On the brakes, those massive Brembos. Does a great job of getting the power to the ground with that all-wheel drive system. It's just, if I'm being totally honest, it is a little buzzy in here. Like from the four-cylinder turbo, you are definitely getting some of that four-cylinder buzz. And even though the shifts are pretty quick, it's just something that feels disconnected there. And, and it's got me scratching my head a little bit. What's nice is, is getting to the massive infotainment system is very easy. You got your AC controls, that beautiful head up display, and they definitely did a great job on the sound ending uh, and the materials in here. There's no creaks, there's no rattles, and there's really nowhere that you feel where you're just like, oh, this is cheap. It, it doesn't feel that way. You got your nice wireless charging area and I'm digging the two-tone. I think the two-tone is what really makes it. And then like I was saying, from a technology standpoint, to bring up the different clocks, you got a compass you could show. I'm gonna go back to clock. We're gonna go classic, classic Maserati style there. And then you just X out of it. I think the one thing that the passengers in the back seat are gonna want are their uh, ventilated seats on top of the heated seats, especially at this price point. But I love the steering wheel is fantastic. And uh, of course, we're gonna go on throttle once again. 
we come to a dead stop. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, we're in automatic mode. On the brakes. This is a telling corner, decreasing radius. Not too shabby. What I'm noticing is on some of the harder 90 degree left and right turns, you are getting a little bit of body roll. But remember, we are in an SUV. There's no way getting around that, but definitely with the battery in the back of the vehicle, that's gonna help lower the center of gravity a little bit. But really interesting how it does communicate with you as you're going through the twisty bits. I am pleasantly surprised in a good way but I'm also anticipating driving the Trofeo. I think that's gonna be obviously <laughs> the one to get, but of course it comes with a higher price tag than this particular one. But I wanna get out onto the highway and see how this Maserati drives. So we're gonna get out on 275 and do some cruising. So doing your daily commute, you know, you can leave it in sport mode. I don't think the suspension is too harsh. I do like the seats. Uh, especially the front seats, they have some nice upper bolstering. The lower bol bolstering is nothing uh, that's gonna make you feel squeezed or, or uh, like you're in a vice grip. But uh, definitely in your daily commute, this is gonna make it feel a little bit more special. And like I was saying, I think they did a pretty bang up job on making this not feel like a parts bin vehicle from other Stellantis products. It has a lot of unique touches, especially that large digital gauge cluster, which just looks phenomenal, especially when you go into the different modes. I'm gonna go, speaking of different modes, let me go ahead and I'm gonna go into comfort. And this is going to adjust the suspension, adjust the steering, the throttle sensitivity, and it also quiets the exhaust some. So if it gets a little too boomy or annoying, go into comfort mode and it quiets, quiets everything hey guys, down. It's that time I put it back into sport mode and we are gonna go on the highway to see how this cruises. I might as well slow down. We're gonna go from a slow roll here about 19 miles an hour. Oh, throttle, here we go. Wow, a little bit of pop, bang out of the back, a little bit of Rice Krispie Treat action. I do like the way as you go through the rev range and when you get to that red line, the whole tack turns bright red. But here we are on the highway, and I'm telling you, even in sport mode, it's doing a good job. It's not too stiff of a ride, nothing that's gonna shake your kidneys out of your body. And then the best news is, like I said, you just twist that drive mode selector knob right on the steering wheel. We could go into GT, which that's gonna make it a little bit more comfortable, and then you could go straight into comfort, and here we are on the highway just cruising let me slow down a little bit we'll go on throttle and comfort mode so you can hear that on throttle so it's just a little bit more slower on the inputs especially with the with the transmission shifting when the transmission shifts in sport mode you feel that purposeful kick in comfort, it's it's really smooth and silky. The challenge is, is that with this particular engine, and I'm surprised because of the hybrid setup, I would expect a little bit more off the line or when you go on initial on throttle. There's a bit of a delay. And normally in a turbocharged setup, you're gonna get that because you do have to, especially a single turbo, you gotta wait for the boost to build and you get that turbo lag. But usually in a hybrid setup, in addition, the electric motor kind of negates that, but I'm not getting that in this Gracali. So just something to think about when you are driving one of these, especially if you're comparing it to the other brands. But still, I think a very viable option. I think it, uh, if you want that Italian style and flavor, unless you go buy a Ferrari, I mean, or you could go, like I said, Alfa Romeo Stelvio. The challenge with the Stelvio, as much as I love it, is that it's got more of that other Stellantis products and it's specifically Dodge switch gear, which does not make it feel as high scale as this particular Maserati. But we're gonna go ahead. Hopefully this has been a nice overall review of the Gracali, especially 
in the Modena trim. We're gonna get back to Maserati at Tampa and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been one heck of a day in Tampa Bay with this Maserati Gricali. We definitely gotta thank Chris and the rest of the crew over at Maserati of Tampa Bay for allowing us access to this new vehicle. Let me know what you think. Has Maserati done enough to separate itself from the rest of the vehicles from Stellantis? And is the Gricali definitely a new performance SUV that you would buy? Let me know in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. I'll come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We gotta give it up, Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. No matter where we're at, whether we're in a park, a parking lot, or on the top of a building, Stephen makes it happen his own very good way. So show him some love in that comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.